Uh, thank you, Bruce. Thank you, friends. John, for your invitation. I look forward to this opportunity. I, um, those were generous words, Bruce. I wasn't sure at first where you were headed. He said, I think this luncheon, this day, marks the very bottom. <laughs> Like I'm thinking the next line is Daniels is here to speak and can only be better after this. Uh, I'm, today's going to be uh, enormously memorable for me. Would have been anyway, but the, the coincidence of being here uh, with this Olympic thing, uh, I know will stay with me. I, I mean, all I could think of is what has the world come to when Illinois can't fix an election? <laughs> I mean, okay, you've got these budget problems and you've got these uh, business problems and uh, state government not working too well, but I thought your core competence was still intact. And <laughs> so I'm shaken, really. Uh, I was on um, this wonderful uh, local radio program this morning, Don and Roma. Everybody must know them. Great story. Not only co-workers been married for 30 years and working together every day. So anyway, uh, they asked about the Olympics, and I said, well, we're neighbors, we're rooting for this to, to work out, I guess. Um, I said, uh, I, did I, and I, I checked last night, and there are 97 members of the uh, International Olympic Committee. So I predicted the vote outcome would be Chicago, 154. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Pavo Normie and Johnny Weissmuller sent in their absentee ballots already. <laughs> So I just don't understand how this thing didn't work out, but uh, my, my, my suspicion is that, like those that just expressed, that uh, long term you may be just as glad you did not catch that particular bus. Um, so this should be fun. Already has been. I've, I've met a couple of people I hadn't seen in a long time. The first person I met walking in the door comes up and says, you're not going to remember, but uh, my name is Greg Barton and I was a junior attorney in the White House when you were an uh, advisor to President Reagan. I said, well, Greg, how, how nice to see you, and how, how good of you to remember me after all those years. And Greg said, uh, well, I'll tell you the truth, I'm not that good at faces, but I never forget a suit. <laughs> <laughs> but friends old and uh, new, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I expect to devote most of our time together to answering your questions, so please formulate a few. Um, uh, I do this for two reasons. One, because then I'll know we're talking about things you're interested in. Secondly, because um, I'm guarded and cautious about ever um, uh, proposing that things that have worked well for us in Indiana necessarily would work well anywhere else, even somewhere right next, next door. Um, but on the other hand, we do believe that we are giving expression to fundamental operating principles of a free society that have proven themselves over and over and over again. And that uh, um, there may be in here some lessons that occasionally uh, people have to relearn. And some in our state did, and maybe that's, maybe that's part of your dilemma here. But uh, let me say at the outset, as I suspect I will again that uh, we are we are sincerely rooting for you we love the rivalry I won't kid you we love to compete um, but competition makes everybody better one of the many geniuses of the federal system is we can not only copy from each other learn from each other's um, breakthroughs and mistakes but that um, uh, states that make dumb decisions long enough, sooner or later, will pay a consequence as people, people of enterprise, businesses, um, pick up and go where the uh, grass is greener. And the system tends to be self-correcting. And that's going to happen again, and I know it'll happen uh, here in your state. Let me just venture a couple thoughts that I hope will tee up your, uh, your questions. Um, First of all, we have operated in Indiana on the basis that the single most important purpose, our organizing principle, uh, can be uh, expressed very simply. I've told our people from since before we were sworn in that every 
strong uh, organization I ever saw had a very clear purpose. Everybody knew what it was and ideally knew exactly what their role in that, in pursuing that objective was, wherever they were working. In our case, it is to raise the net disposable income of Hoosiers. That means to make of, in, uh, among other things, to make of Indiana the most attractive climate we can for uh, free men and women to come and pursue their dreams and goals. Uh, we remind ourselves and our citizens all the time, government never created a job, government never created a nickel of wealth. Government done wrong can destroy wealth and opportunity and drive it somewhere else. Government at its very best simply creates the conditions whereby free men and women create wealth for each other. And so, so that's what we're out to do. Things that people take note of and, and think are um, uh, insignificant accomplishments like cleaning up a fiscal mess. Um, we are proud to do, but we mainly saw it, we saw that mainly as a matter of duty and as pursuant to our real objective. By squeezing spending down, by asking as relentlessly as we can, should government be doing this at all? If so, what's the best, most taxpayer-friendly way to deliver the service? Um, the, the real end game, of course, is to lower the burden of taxation on everybody, to grow the number of taxpayers so you can spread that burden ever more lightly across that growing number, and thereby, as I see it, to leave people more free than they'd be otherwise. 